Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 23rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Are you using Docker containers? Well, who doesn't these days? Uh, we have a quick diary by Xavier today, introducing a quick tool that allows you uh, to check if your Docker image is suffering from any known vulnerabilities or backdoors. There's sort of two big problems when it comes to Docker containers. First of all, they may just be out of date and contain vulnerable software, but uh, sometimes they also come with with additional goodies, kind of these certified pre-pwned uh, Docker containers. So the tool that uh, Xavier uh, is talking about here, Gripe, should be able to help you identify at least some of uh, these issues. Take a look at his uh, diary. It's a pretty straightforward uh, tool. And Risk IQ did some data harvesting to look for additional parts of the attack infrastructure used in the Solar Winds event, and they were successful identifying a couple additional domains that may be associated with the same attack group. Now, they based this on uh, really two pieces of evidence. First of all, the time frame in which the certificates were issued, that's somewhat uh, unique to Solar Winds. However, of course, there were a large number of certificates associated with that particular time frame and the certificate authority that the SolarWinds attackers used. Next, they narrowed down the list by looking at specific uh, patterns coming back uh, from uh, these web servers and uh, limiting those to patterns that matched known patterns from existing uh, infrastructure used by this attacker. Doing so, they were able uh, to narrow it down to a total of uh, 10 new domains and additional information is published by RiskIQ as part of uh, their threat portal. So given that they narrowed it down quite well, it may be worthwhile uh, to take a quick look at uh, your logs. And I'm sure you have logs going back and that's now about a year or so to see if you can spot any of uh, these domain names or other indicators that Risk IQ identified. The makers behind encrypted messaging application Signal took a closer look at Celebrite, the hardware and software that's often used by law enforcement to analyze phones for forensics purposes. Celebrite has sort of two parts to it. The first part takes care of the actual imaging of the phone that copies all the data from the phone. The second part is software that will analyze the data collected from a phone. Now, what Signal found is that uh, this software does use some rather old and vulnerable components. And of course, uh, the software has to parse a very large number of uh, different file formats and borrows a lot of open source components to accomplish that. Some of them have known vulnerabilities. Overall, this may be somewhat disappointing, but not overall surprising. Now, a Signal also stated that they may take advantage of these vulnerabilities by dropping files within Signal that may exploit some of these vulnerabilities in order to hinder the analysis of phones that run Signal. No response yet from Celebrite as far as I'm aware, uh, but of course, patching the software would be uh, the obvious uh, solution here. And anti-forensics is certainly something that this type of software is concerned with. And Sean Kammerling from Orange Cyber Defense did publish an interesting blog post with details about an vulnerability in Duo that allowed for two-factor authentication bypass. The vulnerability was found last December and fixed within a couple days by Duo. But I think interesting sort of lesson here in how to not implement two-factor authentication, of course, of difficulties in doing so correctly. Very quickly, and please read the blog post for all the details, but if you 
are trying to authenticate via Duo. There is a transaction ID that's being created that is then being sent to the device that uh, is supposed to authenticate you. And once uh, that uh, a transaction ID is pulled by that device that essentially confirms that the two-factor authentication took place. But the problem here is that an attacker could also assign themselves the same transaction ID that was sent to the victim. And as a result, these two accounts essentially get mixed up with each other. So while these transaction IDs were random, there was no check done to make sure that uh, there wasn't a duplicate transaction ID used. Again, this was fixed within days, but just now made public. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.